You're listening to the Business and Life Podcast, where seven days a week, proven entrepreneurs share their success stories, failures, and give you true value on how you can build a great business and an awesome life with your host, Mike Olivas. What's happening today, guys? I love this topic. Today, we're chatting with Jamie J, founder and managing director of Bottleneck Virtual Assistants. Bottleneck Virtual Assistance offers business growth opportunities for ambitious leaders and their companies. Bottleneck has created an efficient and systematic approach to identify, hire, and cultivate team members to alleviate your company from the chaos of running your business. All right, Jamie, welcome to the show. Tell our listeners uh, something interesting about yourself and also where you're calling in from. Well, uh, something interesting about myself, I met my wife on the ice. Uh, we play hockey together and absolutely love that. Uh, she's unbelievable. And I'm calling in from Springfield, Missouri. Springfield, Missouri. Is that where you're from originally? No, no. Uh, uh, from Alaska, moved to California, then Nevada. So I'm a West Coast person. Nice. But uh, came out here back and forth with my mom, kind of taking care of her. Yeah. And uh, played some hockey here and met my future wife. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Well, that's awesome. So tell, tell us a little bit about Bottleneck Virtual Assistance. Um, I love the concept. I've, uh, I've been in the VA world in terms of uh, having them for, for years now. But tell us a little bit about the company. Well, uh, again, thanks again for having me, by Absolutely. the way. Absolutely. Uh, this is fantastic. So basically, Bottleneck is, uh, uh, I like this, we, get, we, we help stop the bottleneck in your business. Basically, that bottleneck is you and me. <laughs> yeah. The business owners, the people in charge. And basically, what we do is we kind of help people get in a good position to hire somebody. Um, and it's a dedicated virtual assistant. So they are, are remote based. Um, that helps save tons of overhead, no computers, desks, electricity, W-2s, all of that kind of stuff. Um, workers' compensation, according to Glassdoor, an article says it, in the U.S., the average cost to hire somebody is $4,129. The average cost to fire somebody is equivalent to up to nine months of salary. Yep. Staggering. And so uh, we alleviate all of that uh, and, and then we go out, all of our virtual assistants are based in the Philippines and they're all college graduates. And we do that for two reasons. Uh, number one, we want to make sure that if they commit to something, they finish it. Number two, uh, we really want to find good quality virtual assistants. And that's hard to do sometimes. So we really pride ourselves on the fact that um, we go out, we find somebody that's college educated because in the Philippines is unknown to many people but 100% of the universities are taught in English. Uh, their traffic signs are in English. Um, all of their government documents are in English. Oftentimes, dialects are so different, they'll speak in English to communicate. Um, so we really pride ourselves on finding somebody that can not only read and write and speak English, but also comprehend it. So that's a, that's a big hurdle to overcome. And a lot of times when people are exploring this on their own, um, they kind of don't know to look for some of these things that we've seen. I've been sourcing VAs from the Philippines since 2006. Uh, so I've, I've seen my fair share of challenges and hurdles that I've overcome and, and we've processed it out now to where we can really help people hire quickly and they don't need to go through all these interviews and all that stuff. We'll, we'll yeah. do all that for them. And, th and that's huge. Coming from a guy, if you're listening here and you want to check out, definitely check out Bottlenecks and Virtual Assistance that I have hit my head against the wall and my face and fallen on my ass so many times with the VA world that a, a service like this, um, and I found a couple of them as well in the past, and then I started realizing, of course, eventually um, workflow SOPs and things like that were, that were necessary, but if you're not there yet and or simply um, need to understand that, I 100% I am Philippines-based as well, so I'd love to be able to truly and uh, to be able to <clears throat> kind of back that, you know, Jamie, but in terms of the, uh, like, for example, this podcast totally ran by the VA, uh, my two virtual assistants that run my scheduling, who you also spoke to and emailed with probably to book all this, right? Corazon, and she kills it. And then I have someone who's handling more of the promotion side to go find out where to promote this on different areas of Facebook, Instagram, which groups are connected to virtual assistants. So then you get the benefit for being on the show. It's a win-win. It comes back as a great listener 
uh, listenership for, for the podcast. But the bottom line is my objective was let me show up and do what I do best, chat with people. I want to just show up and record which is what we're doing right now, right? There you and, go. And that's what it's about. And once I'm done, this automatically goes into a SOP process and they take it from there. So it sounds like you're able, do you help with that kind of stuff as well, Jimmy? Like most, the actual most, processes? Most definitely. Well, and, and I can get deep into process. Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, man. I sometimes am, I take this show at different angles, especially when I have a somewhat of a uh, experience in it. So that's, I'm okay with that. But yeah, you, you do help with making sure that people okay, cool. Some, someone's thinking here and I'm going to think like I was less than 10 years ago. Like, cool, I can use one, but what do I have them do? How do I make sure they're productive? Mm. How do I know that someone from across the world is doing what they need to do when they do it when I'm sleeping? Exactly. And this is, <laughs> thankfully you've had experience in this. That is an unbelievable uh, question to ask. Um, and I, and I, I, ch- I, challenge everybody that may even be thinking about this. You know, some of the signs, are you overwhelmed? Are you working late? Are you working on the weekends? Are you, you know, are you dealing with big peeps of hile of email? You know, are you having to book your own travel? All of these things that people worry about um, and they start a business because they love something. They love to do a certain thing, but then all of this other management business stuff comes into play and then you're not focusing on the high level activity you need to be focusing on as an entrepreneur. And so all of this comes into play and then you're like, well, now I got to hire somebody. And hiring um, is very costly. Like, you know that. It's extreme because you may go out, you may not know right, the right things to ask. And you and me, we have all the stuff flying around in our heads. How in the heck do we have time to train somebody? Yeah. One of my favorite sayings is do something as if it's the last time you're ever going to do it. And what that means is everything that you do, you think about, document that. Like literally write it down step by step. Now, this is kind of a pain <laughs> in the beginning, but this is the very essence of creating processes and systems and workflows within your business. And even if you're not ready to hire yet, you, maybe you're not financially ready or you're not system ready. You're not process ready. Start doing this for everything you do. I don't care if it's checking your email, if it's uh, sending out a sales letter, an email, whatever that is, document it. Because there will come a point in time if you want to grow your business where you're going to have to get some help. You really are. Especially for growing people, growing businesses, you know, relatively new, you know, you're three years in, now it's really starting to click and you're really moving forward. If you don't have the processes, how in the world can you expect or where do you even start to train somebody to come in? They got to look inside your head. That's impossible. And what I found is you do things a certain way. Now, you may use the same software as the next guy or the same CRM or whatever that may be, but the way you go about it is totally different than the next guy. Maybe you have a more efficient way of handling something. Document that so that when you bring somebody on, they know exactly what you expect of them and they do it the way you want, the, want it to be done. Now, can your processes be improved? Of course, processes are living, breathing documents. And task that to your VA and say, hey, if you find any holes or anything in here or you find a place that can be improved, please improve it. And many of my processes have been improved by our staff here, but they started off in a certain place to where they knew exactly what their expectations were. And I may go over a, a little bit overboard. It's okay. <laughs> I have a full blown, I, like every single minute of the day is accounted for. Um, but that was a good start. There was no question. There's no ambiguity about where we wanted to start. And that greatly reduces the learning curve, which is a huge plus for us busy uh, entrepreneurs. How many business owners do you have? Probably a rhetorical question on my part, but I want the, I want the listeners to hear, especially business owners that are solopreneurs, or those that think this, and this is probably their biggest hurdle sometimes, I'm the only one that knows how to do what I do. Oh, yes. Right? Uh, right. Oh my gosh. And that's that's why I say, help stop me. the bottleneck in your business. That's you and me. <laughs> yeah, 100%. You could, I mean, you just can't be everything to everyone when you're trying to do that. You're going to be nothing to nobody. And you just, you can't. It's like you, you can't be everything on, you know, the chief executive officer versus the chief everything officer there's so many different angles that people try to take, but 
you're going to run yourself into the ground and get really exhausted. And eventually, I'm not saying you're going to give up, but it gets, it gets exhausting. And I can say that firsthand. I mean, after 13 years of have, and being an entrepreneur in several different companies, I would say that it took me a good five, six, possibly eight to realize, okay, I, I can't do everything. And, and the documentation process, and we were growing, we were growing at great rates, but I also knew that at some point it's just going to cap. And it does, you, can, you know, because I think when, when you're trying to be the, uh, the CFO, the CTO, the integration officer, no marketing, all that kind of jazz. I mean, you, we're talking about I mean, the Philippines can offer everything from actual ads, ad spend, where we're, optimization, checking your email. So when it's all said and done, what is the objective here, Jamie? I think it's this. It's, and this is my two cents, and I'd love to hear your feedback on it. You are now doing what you do best and solely what you do best that moves the company forward, whether it's being the visionary or whether it's creating partnerships or whether it might be just high-level sales initially while you're still stepping away from the sales game if you're a solopreneur. That is the objective is to do what you do best, two, maybe three things, and eventually maybe one or two, but that way others are setting you up for that success. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's solely what I, I do best, but I would say it's probably 70-30. Okay. Uh, and, and the reason why I say that is 70% of the time, I get to do stuff like this. Yeah. This I absolutely love. And just like you said, when we're done today, you're going to hand this off to your VAs. That's going to be processed out. I'm going to go on to my next meeting. Yep. And now I get the benefit of talking with you, getting this marketing and, you know, getting this out there and, and I get to meet you. I get some marketing out. Like it's a lot of cool stuff happening here and it's yep. exciting for me. Um, and thank you to Elaine Pofeld. She's, she just interviewed me, uh, Forbes.com. That's coming out. So we're going to be awesome. putting that out there and see it's that high level activity that I want to concentrate on. However, I do have to spend 30% of the time doing things that don't give me that true energy. Sure. So I may have to do, you know, I just talked with our CFO, virtual CFO. And, you know, we had to go over numbers. I hate going over the numbers. I hate math like I do yeah. about passion. I can't stand it, but it's something I must do. And right. then some of the other things, writing. I don't like writing, but I have to do some writing. Yeah. I have to do some of that stuff. I don't like managing people. And here I am. Yeah. I have a staff. I don't like that. And, and it just, it's not that I, I love our staff. And, and when they hear this, they're going to say, wait, what? Right. <laughs> I love the staff. I really do. But the, it's the actual like, oh, that's, a, I, but that's 30%. So I suck it up because I get the enjoyment of that 70% where I just really thrive. I don't like booking airline tickets. Sure. An assistant will do that, you know? Yeah. There's, so there's, there's, there's the handoff right there. Let's talk a little bit about your entrepreneurship journey here, Jamie. How long have you been in business? So this company, 2016, nice. um, but I started sourcing my first VAs in 2006. I had an ad agency back then. And give me a time when you kind of felt you've hit rock bottom and were able to overcome some kind of disaster or crazy or hurdle. Oh, super simple. Yeah. Homeless. Uh, I was homeless, wow. didn't have anything. And I can't, I just, I just made this analogy today. I thought it was great. I went in today and had lunch. And basically what I did is I, I, uh, fried up a couple eggs or some scrambled eggs and I heated up a little, uh, tortilla wrap. I, I really enjoy, you know, eggs and tortillas. So <clears throat> I had that. And as I was eating, I was like, man, I'm so thankful for this. Cause you imagine, and I cause because this happened to me, I don't take anything for granted. And if I do, I correct myself. I, I check myself right away. I was standing in a McDonald's parking lot begging someone to get me a hamburger. And uh, that's crazy because hamburgers were, I don't know, 99 cents, two bucks, something like that. It was nothing. I didn't have anything on me. Um, and from that experience, I've learned so much about appreciating everything else that happens. I say, I love you to my wife every morning and I mean it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to be there for her. Uh, I, I absolutely love doing what it is that I'm doing. I love working from home. I love, I just absolutely love it. Now, are there challenges? Of course. Do I get frustrated? Heck yeah. Do I get mad? Yes. I, I don't like telling clients sometimes that we're changing our programs and this isn't going to fit with you. And I, I, I don't like that stuff. But 
the whole over overall arching theme is that I'm so thankful for where I'm at today versus where I could be. Are you struggling to grow your business? Have you ever thought, man, I wish I could answer my specific questions about my business? Well, you're in luck and I can help. Go to michaellevis.com and sign up to schedule a free live on air call today. That's right. For a limited time, we're recording real business owners with real struggles. Yeah, gratitude's huge, man. And that's awesome. That I love the story. And thank you for sharing that. Uh, the coming from being homeless and now, you know, having a successful business, Jamie is um, obviously just day and night. Uh, oh. You know, you're buying your own hamburgers now and you're in a position where I think that gratitude comes at such a high level of, I mean, obviously the word appreciation is gratitude, but just you appreciate the hell out of life when you start realizing where it was before. And it's important for a lot of entrepreneurs that may or may not have struggled. I struggled as a, as a, you know, as a kid and understood like, you know, I think I always say that, um, you know, that my, uh, I was, I was fortunate to be, to grow up, um, unfortunate. Right. And, and that, that really helped me have perspective and it still does. And it took me some time to get into the podcast in the world after being a successful entrepreneur to remember that, right? And to remember yeah. what happened. You know, you take those, you take some of those journeys where the keeping up with the Joneses aspect starts kind of coming up because I'm just a part of my own environment of being in Southern California, for example. And, I'm, and then you start realizing none of that stuff. I don't give a shit anymore. Like what, what is it, yeah. right? It's about family. It's about love. It's about business. It's about helping others. And that's what this podcast is about. That's what you and I are doing right now to thousands upon thousands of people that will be listening to this to realize like there's there's light at the end of the tunnel there's gratitude and if you're not enjoying the journey and not and then there's something wrong and let's make sure you're enjoying enjoy the journey not just the outcome uh, exactly yeah absolutely so tell tell me what you think about uh this question here on entrepreneurs out there that you've seen because you deal with a lot of them specifically with your with your uh type of service it's all entrepreneurs it's like who why do you think a lot of them out there just fail? Uh, well, I think uh, number one, or give up. I guess not fail because failure is part of it. But why do they? Why do they just stop? Why do they quit? Yeah, um, I think maybe for them it might be too uncomfortable. Now I hold nothing against uh, people that have worked in corporate America. Yeah. After the first year in corporate America, it took me eleven more years to finally get out. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. I'm very slow, but it was it was super. It was oh my gosh. I took my um, Mont Blanc pen and threw it, threw it in the, in the lake <laughs> when I quit. That was my sign. That's how much I wanted out to be on my own. And I understand the power of relationships and not burning bridges. My very first client was the, the company I left. So I, I, I understand that. But to go circle back around to your question, what makes people quit? I think they need to put it in, per, into perspective. And if you're in a relationship, um, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever that may be, communicate, let them know how you're feeling, let them know where you want to go and let them know that, Hey, this can be challenging. Are you on board with me? If they're not, you, you got to change that. You have to maybe not change them, but maybe you go and you get a job and you do what you need to do and then have a side hustle going on the side, but always communicate with them effectively. That's probably one of the biggest things. And the other thing that I think the reason people quit is because it gets too hard. Maybe they haven't had a rough time in their life. Maybe they weren't homeless. Maybe they didn't overcome cancer. Maybe they, you know, maybe they didn't uh, lose a leg in the military or a limb or something like that. So right. they can't really put that in perspective. And I think that's pretty challenging. And I think also what many people make a mistake in when they go in, they pursue their dreams like this, they only realize the good things. Oh my gosh, I'm going to make so money and we're going to have so much. They don't right. think about, wow, I'm going to lose clients. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have to borrow money to make payroll. I'm going to have to like, you know, this is, this is true life shit. Yep. And, and if you don't, if you don't look at both sides like that and, and the way that you can find out both sides like that is talk to people like you, like, yep. Hey, what were your biggest challenge? What can I expect to have happen if I start out like this? Like, this is what I want to do. And you might start throwing holes in there and say, you know what? I'm throwing holes in there, but don't let that beat you down. Take in what you want. I'm telling you from my experience, this is what's happened to me. This may happen to you, but you need to understand that stuff. And have you talked to your wife? Have you talked to your husband? Are they on board? Because if they're not, 
shit's going to hit the fan quick. Yeah, no, that's why. <laughs> I mean, I, well, I push coaches so much, not just because I am one, because I can't take everybody on. I think the, um, where you know, the masterminds and some of the things that I'll be doing in the future are going to be able to be able to scale more so I can have some more of an impact, you know, but I think that's why I push coaches, whether it's, you know, me or someone else specifically that they might like more. That's okay with me. It's yeah. just as long as they go and get the help. I've done advisors, consultants, coaches, you name it. And I still do. Like, I'm always consistently learning, right? I still have to invest. Like, why are you still investing in this stuff? You've done it. You figured it like, yeah, but it's knowing that um, you start getting at a higher level of education on, I mean, I can help people, you know, and I have to legally say this, I can't give you legal advice, but I can help people through mitigation and legal issues and things like that all the way up until sales market and everything because it just, I've been there. And I think that's what helps with finding a consultant or a coach that's actually done it. And I don't, and I, and I think that there's a lot of good things to say about all the classes and things, but I really think if someone's gone through the entrepreneur journey and been successful, they've also gone through more failures. Mm. So having someone like that on board and helping you, whether it's on your board, whether it's a mentor that just, you asked to have a call a month for 30 minutes and you prep those questions, whatever it is, definitely go get that help. Uh, tell me what you're excited about right now within the bottleneck virtual assistants. Holy cow. Well, we are getting ready to roll out a new platform. We're really excited about it. Um, one of the things that you mentioned earlier, a lot of people don't know how to, how to really hire somebody or how to prepare to hire somebody yeah. or even when they're ready to hire somebody. There's several factors involved there. So we used to have like this six step hiring formula and all this stuff. And we thought it was the whiz bang. And it was really wasn't because as you looked at it, my videos were long. Um, it, it, they weren't produced very well. And then I'd have like five or six things for them to do. And people would say, oh my gosh, this is going to be a nightmare. So we shortened that up. Uh, we have a really quick videos now. We have one thing for them to do. We keep it super simple. And then we also prep them. We give them, you know, we, we have all kinds of tools that they can use to say, okay, this is where I'm at. This is how I prepare. You know, we give them a document. How do I know when I'm ready? This is the first thing I'm going to do. This is I'm going to prepare to interview somebody. This is what I need to do here. This is a delegation roadmap. Thank you, Scott Beebe of my business, business on purpose. Amazing. But it, it's, it's little things like, um, you know, what can you delegate? How do you know what to delegate? Does something give you energy or does it not? If it gives you energy, great. That's something you should probably do. If it doesn't give you energy, is that something you can delegate to somebody? Write all that stuff down. Put three columns on a Google sheet. Super simple. Number one, task. Number two, delegate. Number three, energy. If you label down the task, the task could be email. Number two, does that give you energy or not? No? Okay, perfect. Do, can you delegate this task? Yes or no? Yes. Perfect. That's one task. You take all of the tasks you do in a given day, and then now you have kind of like a subset list of all the tasks that, number one, don't give you energy, and number two, you can delegate. There's the beginning of a job role. And what you might find is there's no golden goose, right? The golden goose role is you can't find one person to do everything out there. So start segmenting those tasks into various lists where somebody that's efficient or effective or an expert in one of those things, web development, graphic design, whatever that is, now all of a sudden you start seeing, oh my gosh, I've got job roles that I can delegate now and yeah. tasks that I can delegate. So it's, it's little things like that that I'm really excited about, how we're able to help people through that journey and really prepare them for hiring somebody. Because right now, the number one thing I have is Hey, I need to do everything. Like you said, the number two thing is I don't have time to train. Just find me the rock star. And the number three thing out of all of that, and this is, this is the best part about it is I just want all of this bad stuff to go away and they just kind of wish it away, but they don't want to put in the work. Yeah. So I, I think that's, um, that's a really good point on, I think that you mentioned that I want to emphasize on people just find me the rock star and tell them what to do. You're going to have to invest some time on what it is that they need to do. What does progress look like? What does productivity look like on paper? Right, mm -hmm. Jamie? And that's, that's definitely something that you need to see that as an investment. And if you're thinking about investment in finances, think about the compound effect of what your interest does and how it compounds over time. Think about that now in terms of time. If you're investing in a virtual assistant that does all the crap and the minutiae that you don't need to be doing, 
Think about how your time now compounds over where your creativity now is going to get better and better and your bandwidth is going to get more uh, robust in terms of being creative on, on being the true visionary of your business, which should be where you're at. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. And here's, here's the other thing too. Why spend your time doing $20 an hour jobs or tasks when you should be focused on doing 100 or $200 an hour tasks? Absolutely. I think a lot of it has to do with mindset. Yes. And, and if, <laughs> like you said, it's this, your business, your baby. I get that. I get it. I get it. I get it. I, I get it. <laughs> The challenge is if you really want to scale your business, like if you really want to take that thing to wherever it is, what you consider success to be, you're not there yet, but you want to get there, you have to start delegating. Because if you're not out there meeting people and, and driving home the message, um, living up to your vision, your mission, your core values, and leaving those menial tasks to somebody that, that they get energy out of, by the way, yeah. right? Yeah. Then you're going to have a really hard time growing that business because you're not meeting new people. Like I get to meet you today. This is a new relationship. Who knows what's going to happen, but I would much rather be here talking to you right now than sending emails. And by the way, uh, we created a really cool process for our emails. Actually, my assistant, she, she did it. But I used to spend about 45 minutes a day on email. And I'm not joking, honest oh, yeah. to God. And most of those was me going and throwing it in trash because it was, you know, spam or whatever. I spend about five to 10 minutes on email a day now. Take that other 30, 35 minutes, multiply that times, take, say I take two months off, 300 days. That's 30 minutes a day times 300. Do you have a, how much time I just found, yeah, <laughs> right? Exactly. It's that kind of stuff. Our time, that's it. Tell, tell uh, before we go really quick, uh, it's my, my final question. Um, before I hit my final question, where can people find you? What's the website? Uh, bottleneck.online. Okay. And Jamie J, are you on any kind of social media, LinkedIn? Where can they find you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm on them all. LinkedIn okay. and Twitter. and you can, you can Google Jamie J. I'll probably show up. Nice. Uh, Google bottleneck virtual assistants will show up. But yeah, we're on the LinkedIn's and the Facebook's and the Twitter's and the Instagram's and all that stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. Uh, make sure you head now. We'll, we'll make sure we put those links on our show notes, everybody. If you want to jump on there and just Google at michaellevis.com and check out Jamie J in the search bar widget there, you'll, you'll find them. How, how are you, uh, out of all your successes and your failures, of course, we've all had those. What is the one piece of pardon advice that you give to current on, entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs that are listening right now? Um, well, I would say one piece of advice is focus. And let me elaborate just really quick. <clears throat> I, for the last couple of years, <clears throat> excuse me, I've had a word of the year. Um, two years ago, it was a listen. Listen intently and soulfully to engage notably. Last year, it was focus because we were switching our business model around to a subscription-based model from an invoice-driven model. Complete night and day difference. Huge. Uh, by the way, if you don't, if you get a chance, read the automatic customer by John Warlow, fantastic. But what we did is we took focus and I came up with, with an, what I really needed to be done is I really needed to focus finding opportunities by creating uninterrupted strategy sessions. That's what focus means to me. If I could sum it up in one word, think. Yep. How many of us actually just think? The best time to do this, maybe in the morning when you first wake up. Yeah. I wake up, swing my, set, my legs over the side of the bed, and I just take a little bit, and I just think uninterrupted. Or maybe I've got in the back porch, no devices. I don't even have a pen and paper. If I come up with an idea, if it stays there, it was a good idea. If I forget it, it was not a good idea. But I just think about stuff. It could be personal. It could be professional. I don't believe in work-life balance. I believe in life balance. Yep. So take the time to just think that would be my parting uh, advice to anybody. Take a little bit of focus time for you. Finding opportunities by creating uninterrupted strategy sessions. It'll blow your mind if you just take five minutes a day yep. just to think. Awesome. You heard it here, guys. Think. Focus. Jamie, thank you so much for t dropping your stories and your knowledge. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. 
Life Nation, you've got to remember that in order for things to change, you must change. And in order for things to get better, you must get better. You just got better by hanging out with me, Michael Lebus, and the Business and Life Nation. So come back tomorrow because I'm here dropping sound bombs seven days a week, baby. If you'd like to subscribe, please do so you can take action and execute. See you tomorrow.